in other uh, parts, other areas of discussion around the health service, that, that it's often been a weakness. Do you think it's something that we could get tighter on in Scotland? Sure. Sharing best practice around equality impact assessment, for instance. Um, well, I think, I mean, I, my sense, and uh, people in the audience who would be better equipped to say how well or otherwise we do it, there are networks within the health service um, amongst equality practitioners for sharing that. And I think certainly the Equality and Planning Directorate has helped generate that. We're also quite small as a country. And, you know, one of our advantages that we have over other areas is that we do talk to each other. I think there's quite a lot of dialogue, not just within the health service and between boards and between practitioners, but also outside of that, the connections between local government and the health service, between national and local government, and our community planning partnerships and others, though they're still raw in some areas, and I know that people will say there's still lots of work to be done to get that, um, uh, you know, the developments of the partnership idea is something that's quite well founded in Scotland, and I think we should try and develop that. Um, and, and the foot's and going to have to go down on that. Your point about opportunities as well as challenges in, in the, the, the what's coming off the track at yes. us, which is going to direct a lot of thinking around this. Right now, I mean, we've got one more question, but which is very much around another aspect of equality, which is about access, which is about, um, for instance, and, and I would call it as a journalist postcode. <laughs> provision, for instance, but a question about big differences in tran transgender treatments available across different health boards, what can be done to improve equal access across Scotland. If I could just open that question out into, you know, if there is inequity of access, does that come within this agenda? You know, just answer, if I could ask people if they've got an interest in this, to answer very briefly and we'll... My, 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 certainly, uh, from the men's health point of view, there is, a, there is an issue about the number of services that are provided during the day when a lot of men just yeah. can't access them yeah. and I, I'm sure if you and did a, an inequity of access. if you did a gender equality mm -hmm. audit of the um, obese uh, weight loss services yeah. then it, it, it just automatically falls into the um, uh, failure because it's you've got more men are overweight and obese they've got yeah. huge health, um, health challenges due to their specific kind of obesity and yet I would think 80% of the people who attend the weight loss groups, 90% are women. So there's an example of a really big challenge yeah. coming up the track. I'd like to thank you very much, our panel, for taking that on. Yeah? More questions? Sorry, go on. All right. I was just going to kind of uh, say something about the question, which was about access to services for transgendered people. Yes. And throughout Scotland, um, there is unequal access, and I think that's a key issue and um, point Which that needs to be addressed. Which is different to access issues in general. Well, it is about access, yeah. but particularly for, uh, for transgender, transgender people. people. Right, okay, let's get an answer to that one then. Yeah? I don't know if there is an answer. Yeah. It's a point to comment really more than anything. Yeah. I think um, Sorry. Uh, a person well pleased yeah. to give an answer Good. is at the back right. of the room. So specifically, the, I think from the, the number of questions we've had about transgender issues, I do get the feeling that, that transgender people don't feel as though they've had the, the prominence. Uh, yeah, um, I'm Nick Laird and I work with the Equalities and Planning Director at Health Scotland as well. Um, there's separate issues here. There's um, the issues of um, the gender reassignment patient pathway, if you like, the, yeah. the kind of the services that people use within the NHS um, during transitioning. But then there's also the separate issues of um, just general services and the um, kind of prejudice and discrimination or difficulties in accessing services that transgender people can, can have. So there's, there's separate issues there. In terms of the um, gender reassignment patient pathway, there's some work kind of planned over the, the next year. And, um, that would be in partnership with the Scottish Transgender Alliance and others uh, to kind of look at that pathway across Scotland because there are major issues in relation to where people live and what access to services they've got. Uh, there's major issues in terms of uh, funding, whether that's kind of localised or whether it comes from a central resource. And, um, Is it a national service? Yeah, the, the, I mean, yeah. there's various different issues with that, but there's also there's opportunities there to look at um, gender reassignment pathways in other countries as well and what other people are doing and kind of... Uh, 
bring together people that actually do have the ability to influence change in, in that service and to improve that in Scotland. Because in actual fact, Scotland in a lot of ways is really kind of pioneering in relation to transgender equality and that it's got the Scottish Transgender Alliance, which is the the only transgender organisation in Europe that's actually funded by the government. And that's, that's really there as well to support um, organisations and public sector organisations. Um, but that's kind of separate from the, the actual uh, gender reassignment pathway, which in Scotland can still be um, a difficult process for people and not necessarily a fair process for people as well. And there's some real uh, good points about it too, and in some areas there's some good points, and they should. there's an opportunity for Scotland in actual fact to be um, a kind of center of excellence if you like you know it's there's a lot of potential there there's people there that could possibly make that stuff happen so um hopefully hopefully we will be I able to i don't know whether any of the people that asked any of those questions wanted to come back then and and you know provide a response to that or no okay let's i'd like to thank you very much thank you. panel thank you for taking